Hey everyone, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhaira Bagga and today I'll be playing the 5 minute blitz on Lee Chess with zero increment and during the game I'll try to be as instructive as possible like always making sure that everyone understands the flow of the game, what the opponent is trying to do, what are our plans and how are we going to implement them. Also post the match we'll have a quick computer analysis to understand something which the computer is trying to tell us that what kind of moves could have been done a lot of better stuff in the position and you could have taken advantage there i hope there will be something to be definitely taken away from the game and before we start off the game i would request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that i'm posting up daily so yeah let's start off with the game and see how it goes we have got the black pieces here i'll play c6 d5 the caro can't defense if he takes i take back and now bishop to f5, a natural move for in the Karukan. And now knight to f6, opponent castles. We'll try to just create a good pawn chain here. Knight c6, the idea is to get the rook on c8. Let's not waste any time and get it. Okay. Let's still have the bishop on d6. Okay, if I move the pawn ahead, he takes, I take back. Not much is happening there. I need to remove one of the attackers from here. How is e5 here? Interesting to me. Do we notice this a7 is not hanging? The knight defends it trying to pin the knight so that he can take on the pawn there let's bring back the bishop and defend the pawn it's important to not give away pawns for free they are very helpful in the end game we'll try to kick the bishop away from here it goes back i think we can just push pawns forward and probably now we will not castle in this game because the structure doesn't allow us to mostly we still can, but let's see if that's required or not. Uh, can we play d4 here? It attacks the knight, but if knight comes over here, it attacks the bishop. We can bring back the bishop if required. Let's see. Let's see where he goes. A couple of options. He chooses to go on e4. If I take, he gets. Uh, I mean, that's okay. But why do I have to take? I can just safeguard my bishop. Oh, but he can then hop in. I can't. Can I just defend my knight with the bishop? That's why bishop is important. Or I can take. Let's take and see what, what happens. Okay. Now we have to reroute our knight probably. Eventually. Looks okay to me. We can get the bishop that packs the pawn he doesn't oh extra pressure over on the e5 which this knight will safeguard two attackers and two defenders so that's good We can some point of time play h5 and maybe even h6, h4. Okay. Let's definitely play it. Goes back. How about this? He takes back. I take... 
let's see if he wants to take or not. If he moves it forward, that's okay. And that opens up the edge file now at least. Hmm, what can we do here? Let's take the queen somewhere. Maybe knight next. Trying to exchange with the bishop. Or we can go here as well. To see if he takes. So offering exchange of queens. Not really willing to do right away. You can take on the bishop next if he doesn't take now. That comes with a check as well. And that folks the queen too. So it's important for him to grab this now. And when he does we can take back with the pawn. This is not looking good for white here. Okay, he saves the bishop. Then let's bring the dark square bishop defending the queen at least. So that next time we give a check. He is trying to save everything, okay. Let's exchange the light square bishop there. Now he has to take no other option, otherwise he loses the rook. Okay, he gets the rook in between, we'll take here. He takes with the pawn. Is his queen coming somewhere deadly? Let's stop this for once. Okay. We can take. He takes with the knight maybe. Yep. And we just get the queen back. A threatening check. He goes back. Is the... Ah. Rook has a nice place. Threatening check, which he defends, we will take here. He is losing a queen there, if he takes with the queen now, because we will give a check and that loses the queen. Oh, that's why he left the game. When he came back, ah, that's a queen loss. Discover attack. You can still save the game on time. Let's see if he can. We'll take on the pawn. Bishop is hanging, the pawn is hanging with the rook. But just need to play on time. Check. Okay. Let's take on the pawn. Is that mate? Nope. There is a mate somewhere. All we need to do is that find that mate quickly. Uh, check. Check. Block the files, block the ranks. Do something about it. Okay, controlling everything. A rook gives a check. He goes back. Ah, uh, check, 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 and mate in the next. Cool.
we did it on time. That was important to wrap this up uh, on time as well, because we were winning in position, but you have to win games for your track record, for ratings and lead chess. So yeah, that's good enough. A win is always helpful. Let's quickly analyze the game and see how it went. It started off with e4. I played the Karo Khan defense, my favorite defense uh, from black. Very solid one. Starts with c6, followed by d5. And if the opponent takes, it's simple. You take back. So you haven't lost anything. Uh, I have opened up the c file already. Uh, but uh, in that regard, you have got center control. You have two center pawns, e and d file, which is very helpful. Developing the bishop first before closing the diagonal for the bishop by moving e6. Uh, bishop should be out of the pawn chain. That's very important. That's what we do here. We develop the knight, then f2, f6. He cancels. And now we play e6 uh, after we have taken out the bishop. Tries to get knight on c3. We play knight to c6. Uh, h3, passive, I would say, in the beginning. And I get my rook on c8. Then he plays again a passive move, which is a3, but just trying to make sure that I'm not keeping my bishop on b4, but that's not a pin on the knight, so that's nothing to be worried about. So I played uh, bishop to d6, just developing my, all my minor pieces. Uh, finally, my opponent also does the same by bringing the bishop on a3. So that was the right move that I found there, which was pawn to e5. Here he plays bishop to g5 and yes i defended the pawn because his idea was if uh, i'm just a bit care careless here and try to just remove the pin he can just take on the pawn as well maybe oh and even in this case he can't so okay that was fine i just tried to defend the pawn which was the best move as well centralizing the bishops is always nice it's a very good structure if you see in the center uh, that shows a complete control of black on the game and if you see on the other hand white has got back his knight on h2 which is passive uh, and also his pieces are not doing much the bishop is behind the pawn and is eyeing a diagonal which is pretty much helpless the other bishop is also just pinning the knight but not much of a use because next move is h6 removing the bishop from there and yes he had to take which he doesn't and that allows me to move the pawns forward so g5 was natural he brings back and here i played d4 oh, okay i should have just continued my pawns on the king side is what computer is suggesting but d4 was my idea of just removing the knight from there uh here i was a bit confused to what to do here i didn't want to lose my dark square bishop because if i go here he'll probably take on the bishop next uh which i didn't want to do because bishop pairs are very important in the game uh, so I took on the knight eventually and he takes back with the pawn. Now uh, we have got some decent pawn structure still. If you see uh, f7 is a bit weakened up but the light square bishop is guarding that as well. So it's a good structure for black here. That's why the game is still in favor of black a bit. Here I played knight to e7 just trying to read out my knight as I showed in the game as well. So now knight goes to g6, defending the pawn. It had two attackers, so same number of defenders. That does the job. We had an option of if he tries to attack somehow on the pawn extra, then we can bring queen to c7 as well. He now brings, uh, oh, that was a bad move from him as per the computer, bringing the bishop on d3. That allows me to play pawns forward to h5. The knight goes back. Uh, again, this was again tricky that, oh, his bishop was losing there. Ah, I missed that. That's sad. I should have saw that coming. But this was also fine because after he takes, I just take on the pawn and open up the edge file for the attack. Oh, even here, I think pawn was, I, I just made a mess out of it. I should have taken the bishop. He tries to hang on to the pawn there, trying to attack the pawn. I just trying to take my pieces towards the king side now for the attack. He tries to exchange queens and I bring the knight in between to f4. Uh, okay, he brings bishop to defend the center pawn, but oh, he's actually just saving the bishop from the knight. I bring back the bishop on e7. As you see, 
pieces wise it's equal but uh, the opponent is pretty much losing here because of the attack going on the king side founds the right move uh, queen to e1 i just try to exchange the bishop there he doesn't take defends it with the rook i take he takes back with the pawn I just played a b6 here once uh, the idea was if now the queen tries to come over here uh, on a5 that can be a bit troublesome because i can lose a pawn there maybe the next move can be queen to b5 attacking the king and then i have to run, run away my king somewhere so rather i played b6 first and that was a very bad move as i said in the game as well f3 weakens up his king side further I took on the pawn. He takes back with the knight. Oh, computer saying leave the queen and just go for the attack because that can be made from there very quickly. I just bring back my queen. He goes back with the knight and I now place my rook on c2. Very attacking square. Here he does a blunder which I capitalized finally by taking on the rook. And yes, he, you cannot take on this because the discover attack happening. That's what I did in the game. He takes and I just give him a check. He has to save the check here, so he has to take the knight, and the queen goes. He tries to defend, but I just take on the pawn, and knight also in a bad place. It was made in seven from here, made in six, or made in three from here. How? Let me see, queen over here, sacrificing the rook. Ah, oh, these mates are very tricky. Very tough to be found, at least for me. So I just tried to play normal, trying to take away stuff and so that I can mate eventually. He takes on a pawn there, I give a check, he goes up, I give a check with the bishop. And then just trying to attack. It's again a check, taking on the knight first. Why did I move the king there? I think I was losing on time, but just trying to make sure that I have ample of space to move the rook as well if required and that's again made in two i did a lot of mistakes in this game uh, but that's okay i won the game at least took on the rook first so end game is something where you can of course find quick mates but um, it's always important to find the mate rather than just finding quick mates i eventually did find one and that's what matters just trying to push him backwards and oh it was a mate with the bishop as well but i thought of just using the staircase technique so eventually a mate and a good looking one as well we have a lot of pieces remaining and that was dominating i would say at the end so yeah a good game i hope there was something to be taken away and Keep watching, sharing, and commenting. Do like the video. It takes a lot of effort to build, make these videos, and I'm putting up one daily without a miss. It's been more than two months now, and I'll continue it for as long as possible. Keep supporting me, and thank you so much for your time. I hope there was something to be taken away. See you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.